Good morning. Is this Dr. Lisa Richardson? Yes, it is. And Pamela Bryant? Yes, good morning. Thank you so very much for joining us here on the Valder Beebe Show live in Dallas, Texas. It's my honor. Well, thank you for having us. Well, Dr. Richardson, I, we're going to talk about cancer today, and this is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and so we're just going to jump into this. You want to tell us about some of the side effects of chemotherapy? Yes, ma'am. The main side effect that we're here to talk about today is a low white count or neutropenia. Um, this is something that occurs with chemotherapy. Uh, when women are given chemotherapy, it can make the white counts low because chemotherapy kills uh, fast-growing cells, and the white cells do that. That's a side effect. It, it, does it outweigh the benefit of chemotherapy? Oh, absolutely not. I mean, over the years, we've gotten better and better with treatment, and we've absolutely gotten better with supportive care, which is how to support people during the time that they're receiving treatment. And so for neutropenia, you know, we train patients to um, know the signs and symptoms, especially having a temperature, and to call their doctor right away if there's a problem. So they need to uh, know their white count. Is this something that happens in chemotherapy where they get maybe a listing of where they stand with their white count and other bodily functions? Yes, ma'am. That's something that um, they should definitely discuss with their health care provider and health care team. Um, the white count is drawn when they come to the clinic. And there's a specific time after the chemotherapy is given that you would expect the white count to be low. And patients need to ask their doctor when that um, time period would be. Okay, if we can switch to Pamela Bryant. Pamela, tell me, how do you connect to this? Well, I was diagnosed with an early stage breast cancer about a year ago, and my treatment plan included chemotherapy, about four months to be exact, followed by surgery and then several weeks of radiation. Um, as Dr. Richardson mentioned, uh, during the time of chemotherapy, there, there were points in which I didn't feel my best, uh, kind of sort of felt fatigued, maybe a week or so after receiving uh, my medicines. Uh, but my doctor explained to me that that was the time that I was most susceptible uh, to, to disease or you know, catching uh, another illness. So I was very mindful to, to monitor my body and pay, pay close attention uh, to my temperature and uh, make sure that I, that I checked my temperature so that uh, if I did run a fever, I could call my doctor right away. How are you feeling now? I feel great. I'm very happy to be here today and be able to share uh, a little bit of my story with you. One more question. When you walk the path of breast cancer, that, that's got to be a dark and scary path. path. How do you have the strength mm -hmm. to talk about it like you're talking about it? What gives you the ability to go through it? You know, the fact that I come from a family of breast cancer survivors really helped me through this journey. I mean, my family really stepped up. They were here uh, to answer questions uh, that I felt like I couldn't ask my doctors. Uh, they were with me uh, during my treatments. They also just pitched in and helped out a lot around the house. Uh, my family, as well as my coworkers, everyone really stepped up to the plate to be the most that they could be for me during that time. Thank you for that advice, Pamela Richards. Brian, I'm sorry. Dr. Richardson, I want to find out, there, it says that 600,000 people received chemotherapy uh, in 2014 alone. Mm-hmm, that's right. That's a great number of people, so that, does that mean that we've got lots of people with cancer, obviously? Well, the trend in cancer is that as we get older as a country, you know, the age groups are, are aging, cancer will be more frequent. Um, that's about half of the people diagnosed with cancer each year uh, will have chemotherapy. So are we in the stage where we deal with cancer or because we haven't found a cure, so we just have better medicines and more therapies? That's exactly right. We have more therapies, better therapies, as well as screening for breast cancer is very effective with mammography. Okay. Where would you like my audience to go and find out more information about knowing their vital signs so that they can be aware of their white count? Um, our website is preventcancerinfections.org. There's lots of information there for patients and their families and the people that take care of them in the clinics as well. Well, Dr. Lisa Richardson is the medical officer and oncologist at the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. I want to thank you. And I want thank to thank you. Carolyn O'Brien for sharing her story. Thank you for coming on the Valder BB Show. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's been my pleasure.